and all this happening on a massive scale. And this process has, until recently, continued unabated. Now it is being stopped. The term human trafficking is often employed in the place of the term human sacrifice, so as to spare the fragile emotional stability of normal people. But it's the same thing. And this sacrifice network is being destroyed. And this COVID-19 pretend plague is all mixed up in this. Across the world right now, you and I and your friends and family and my friends and family are all witnessing the biggest global psyop since World War II. Let that sink in for a moment. We are experiencing firsthand the most internationally comprehensive mass scale psychological warfare tactic foisted upon people since 1939. Who are the controllers? Well, when you ask that question, things get complicated. So let's say evil tacticians and their agents and good tacticians and their agents, totally opposing factions, each in control of various assets and technologies and weapons and histories and timelines and information, are all lying to us. All lying about what's going on right now. Some are lying to hurt us and protect themselves. And some are lying to protect us and eliminate the hidden enemy of empire. They sometimes call this lying for a positive eventual outcome. Optics in the military intelligence communities. And they do this at times to shield people from the nature of an enemy that most people don't want to think about. Something so foul, based on the sacrifice of human beings, supernatural, that the average punter would be off to the loony bin if they grasped the full magnitude of the situation. Especially the most important aspect, which is the supernatural demonic aspect. Even without any of that, though, if you spend a few days dedicating yourself to diligently and meticulously examining the real independent data and credible research on COVID-19, you will conclude, as millions of rational, conscientious people already have, that the numbers don't add up. What constitutes a virus case, a virus death, or even how the virus is identified, tested and confirmed. All that stuff is well sketchy. And honest people trained in infectious diseases will tell you that those grey areas are often heavily exploited and abused by corrupt authorities and the mockingbird media to sway opinion, to control them. The mainstream media is an intelligence operation. And if you look at the virus data, it speaks for itself. It's not hard to corroborate and substantiate. But even if you you didn't know anything about any of this, you didn't know how to research how to collate objective, credible data for yourself, which is a skill everyone can cultivate, all you would need to do, if you're too busy for any of that, all you'd need to do is to look at the numbers, even the fake numbers. And what do they tell us? They tell us that, proportionately, a tiny number of people are sick. Most of them turn out okay. A very small number of them die like they always do. And yet, in response to this unremarkable situation, the entire world has come to a standstill. And that stoppage has put society under tremendous pressure. And in some places that's been dealt with relatively well, and in other places not so much. 
depending on the population density and the tendency toward independent thought in the people. The whole response to the pretend plague is absurdly disproportionate to the problem itself. In fact, if no one had told us about it, I don't think anyone would have noticed either now, next year, or in 10 years. People get flu. Most do okay. A few die. Same as always. Sad. Fact. Most deaths are due to underlying health problems. A few are not. Same as always. And when you measure something a lot, you get more results than before you measured it a lot, when you measured stuff less. Like a police department that starts recording crime statistics in new, more efficient ways with computers and mobile devices and whatnot. And then that next year, the crime stats go way up. And if a mainstream news site reported that story, it would seem that things have got suddenly a lot worse. Crimes rocketed and, you know, gone through the roof and things are terrible. But if you read into the story and delve into the body of what's really going on, you realise it's the measuring that's produced the result of something striking, not the actual situation on the ground. So the impact of this plague psyop, as I see it, has most people splitting into one of three groups. The first group, the good This group of people believe that the cavalry are going to save us and everything's fine and the covert master plan is going ahead full speed, full control. The cavalry's here. The stealthy good guys have everything, all the intel, all the tech, all the good stuff and the baddies are just totally screwed now. And now we just need to be patient and sit back and watch our computers and let things unfold. Something big is coming and everything's going to be good. Game over. The second group, the bad. This group believes that we're all hopelessly doomed. This plague is just the last straw, the final nail in the coffin, and this sort of terrible cataclysmic pretext for complete social control by empire. That's what this is. And we're talking cashless society, deep state crypto, mandatory vaccines, chips, 5G satellites, and just some bloody giant appalling transhumanist dystopian nightmare where human independence is just crushed. Game over. The third group, the ugly. This group is made up of really the biggest demographic, normal people. Normal people who, as ever, have got their head up their bum. And just don't know what is happening, really. Unless the BBC or CNN or some hideous website tells them. Or their president or governor or minister or whatever tells them what's going on and what they should do. And honestly, I don't know what we can do for these people. How can one accommodate those who have chosen not to think for themselves so chronically, so irresponsibly? And as you can see, if you look around, these people somewhat predictably, just run neurotically around in various stages of outrage and suspicion and sanctimony and fear. Again, game over. All of these three groups, the good, the bad and the ugly, have two things in common. One is that they're all naive. The other is that they all place far too much weight on things outside of themselves. Things which are distant and man-made and unknowable and potentially very disempowering. So the acolytes of these three groups are very easily deceived and like lemmings are apt to just march off the cliff at the right moment. The truth is, our salvation is 100% a spiritual matter. It's all between you and God. Your own life and being and reason ought to be the primary means of establishing a deepening connection to reality. Your insights, your inquiries, your practices, your contemplations are the gold. Your daily walk with God is the only thing in the universe that will save you. 
your authentic presence, your embodiment of goodness, your rugged independence, your profound love, your creative potency are what it's all about. Not some tripe from the good, the bad and the ugly crowds. You are the one to put the coronavirus in its proper place. You. The wholehearted path of spirit is close and knowable. Not out of reach, not distant, not hearsay from strangers on the internet. It is intimate, always with you. And you are in the driving seat. The three centres of human experience, heart, mind, soul, give us everything we need to know our divine work. If we learn to use them right, game on. The hunt is afoot. Can you allow yourself to feel what it is to be known and loved unconditionally? by the creator of all life, who knows you personally, knows precisely who you are, all about you, every hair on your head, everything you ever got right, ever got wrong, every time you laughed, every time you wept, all the injustices and pain, all the triumphs and celebrations, everything, Can you accept the truth of this sacred relationship? Everything that truly matters here, everything substantial and precious, is found in relationship between oneself and God. As you present your inner being, in all its pristine openness to the divine, loving creator that encompasses you, you will instantly gain a perspective that is life-changing. Less will bother you. You will be stronger. You will know more. You will love more. To the practical. If some good secret people are unravelling empire and helping return us to a more equitable and peaceful social state, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think some of that is happening. Wonderful. We can definitely learn things about empire from good, mature, parapolitical commentators. I'm glad they're out there digging and sharing and pondering and broadcasting. They're doing a thousand times more than the normal dipsticks. So we have to take our hat off to them, the good ones, not the nut jobs. And to have a good president, good military, good intelligence, good lawmakers, good everyday folk. Yes, of course, thank God. Thank God for them. The normal media consumers, thinking only the things beamed into their skulls and all the fake Hollywood claptrap and fake government advice and so on, the fake tech, all that reckless twaddle. Well, that is not a very good way to live. It's not very respectful, is it, of the great heavenly commission. Not a good choice. But they can forfeit their life if they wish. That's their business. And the doomers that fret over our impossibly bleak situation. Well, we are in the middle of spiritual warfare. It's true. Natural. And frankly, it's more dangerous than the Dumas could possibly imagine. So intense is the supernatural conflict, in fact, that God had to come here in person himself, walk among us a little while ago, in order to bind the chief demon, and thereby ensure we all had access to the Earth's multidimensional spiritual knowledge, embedded in reality itself, so good people can be transferred into light bodies when God concludes the 3D classroom and all matter everywhere is destroyed forever in a massive graduation fireworks display. This 
event itself ushering in a colossal dimensional one-way shift upward. That's some pretty important stuff right there. Hard to worry about Empire's flavour of the month mischief. Pointless. Their fate is sealed. So nothing that any of these groups are talking about, the cavalry people, the doom people, the normal people, none of it should in any way change your walk with God. Mark my words, the demons are on the run. They are starved and desperate. Empire is finished. Sure, there's some melodrama to come, but no big deal for eternal spirit warrior children of God. All untrue things dissolve in time. True things go onward. <laughs>